In the last video, we looked at the nth term of a geometric sequence. In this video, we're just going to work through a range of questions that involve geometric sequences. In question 6, we're told a geometric sequence with a positive ratio has 3rd term 18 and 7th term 1458. We are asked to find the value of the 10th term. This is similar to a question we looked at in the last video. We write out an expression for the third and the seventh term, set up and solve simultaneous equations, and then plug back in to the formula. The formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence, a sub n, is equal to a r to the n minus 1. If that doesn't mean anything to you, please check out the video prior to this. So if I now look at the seventh term, the seventh term will be a multiplied by the ratio to the power of 6, and that's 1458. If I look at the third term, that will be a multiplied by the ratio squared, and that is going to be 18. I'm going to call this one equation 1, this one equation 2. We can eliminate a and solve for r by dividing. So two unknowns, two equations. We have 1 divided by 2. A over A is 1. R to the 6 over R squared will give us R to the 4th. And then we'll have now 1458 over 18, which is going to give us now 81. Let's just go ahead and check that. So 1458 divided by 18 should give us 81. So from this now, we need to take the fourth root of 81. So 81 to the power of 1 quarter. This is going to give me now plus or minus 3. So r is equal to plus or minus 3. We can say now that r is greater than 0. Therefore, the ratio is going to be equal to 3. At this stage, you can simply keep multiplying this amount by 3. Generally speaking, though, we would substitute in to find for a, especially if a question asks for it, and then go ahead and use the formula. So if you want to find the tenth term, you can simply keep going ahead and multiplying this by 3 until you get there. Or using equation 2, substituting in, we'll have a multiplied by the ratio squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, and that will be equal to 18. So a is going to be 18 over 9, which is 2. So what we have is a, the first term, adds 2, and r, the ratio, is 3. So we want now the tenth term, a10, is going to be equal to the first term, a, multiplied by the ratio, which is going to be now 3, and we need that to the power of 9. That's n minus 1. So let's go ahead and do this. We will do now 2 times 3 to the power of 9, and that will give us 30, what have we got, 39,366, so 39366. Often the question will ask you to find the first and the tenth term, for example. I would prefer if you didn't just keep multiplying by this, especially if we were asked for the 112th term, for example. And also, that's not going to be easy if the ratio is messy. Question 7. A geometric sequence has the first three terms 2, 2k and 9k plus 5. Given that k is greater than 0, find a, the value of k, and b, the seventh term of the sequence. What we've seen before is that with a geometric sequence, we have a common ratio, or if you like, it's multiplied by a fixed amount. So what we could say here is that 2k divided by 2 will be the same now as 9k plus 5 divided by 2k. In general, we saw that a sub 2 divided by a sub 1 was the same as a sub 3 divided by a sub 2. So that's something that we looked at in the last video. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and solve this equation. Multiplying both sides by 2k, the 2s will drop off. We will have 2k squared is equal to 9k plus 5. We have a quadratic in k, 2k squared minus 9k minus 5 is equal to 0. 
that looks like it'll factor 2k plus 1, k minus 5, and that's equal to 0. We know that k is greater than 0, so k cannot be equal to negative 1 half, and we've got k will be equal to positive 5. So that is the value of k. We now need to find the seventh term of the sequence. So if we just substitute this in, what we've got is 2, then we're going to have 10, then we're going to have on here now 9k plus 5, that is going to be 50. So from this, we can see now that the ratio is going to be 5 as well. So r is also equal to 5. So ratio is 5. So what we need is the seventh term. So we need a7. Well, that's going to be the first term, 2. And we multiply that by the ratio to the power of n minus 1, which is 6. So in a calculator, 2 times by 5 to the power of 6, that's going to give us 31250. So 31250. And that now is the seventh sequence of the term, or the seventh term of the sequence, I should say. So there we go. That's all we needed to do. And simply find the value of k, substitute in, and then go ahead and look now at finding the seventh term. In question eight, we're told a geometric sequence has the first three terms, 2p, 1 half, and p to the negative 4. In part eight, we need to find the value of p. So we can say that 1 over 2 divided by 2p will be equal to, now, p to the minus 4. I can write that now as 1 over p to the power of 4 divided by 1 half. So if we look at this right here, I can write this now as 1 over 4p, and that is going to be equal now to 2 over p to the fourth. Multiplying both sides by p to the fourth and both sides by 4, we can see that p to the power of 3, p to the power of 4 over p is p to the power of 3, will be equal now to 8. And we can see that p is the cube root of 8, so p is going to be equal to 2. We need to write down the nth term for the sequence. Well, let's just substitute in p. That's going to give me now 4. We've got 1 half. And then we've got on here now 1 over p to the fourth, which is going to be 1 over 16. So if we look at this now, we can see from this, and you can sub it into here, or you can sub it into here, or you can just look, and you can see that the ratio is going to be on here 1 over 8. So that's the ratio. Four, uh, 1 half over 4 is the same as now 1 16th over 1 half, and that will give us 1 eighth. So we can say now the nth term a sub n is equal to the first term, which is going to be 4, multiplied by the 1 eighth to the power of n minus 1. We simply use a sub n is equal to a r to the n minus 1. And I've just gone ahead and found those values. Okay, we now need to find the value of a8 minus a6. So all I'm going to do is simply substitute this into a calculator. Of course, I would show four workings. But what we'll have now is the following. So we'll have four times by it now. Uh, we'll have one eighth, and we will do this. And you can do a lot of factoring with this. So we want now to the power of seven. So that will be to the power of seven. And then we're going to subtract away from this four times by uh, what we're going to have one eighth to the power of five. Again, if you want to do this in a neater way and factor it, uh, lots of common factors in here. I'm just going to put it through a calculator. So if we just look at this then, this is my nth term. If we want to now the eighth term, this value will be 8 minus 1, which is 7. And then we will have now the sixth term. This will be 6 minus 1, which is going to be 5. 
So let's find the value of that. That's going to be on here now negative. So let's put that in as an exact fraction, negative 63. So negative 63. And that is going to be over 524288. 524288. So that is A sub 8 minus A sub 6. So nice and logical. And we have our answer. OK, let's look at the next question. In question 9, a ball is dropped from a height of 5 metres above the floor. After bouncing once, it reaches a height of 4 metres above the floor. The height reached by the ball after each subsequent bounce forms a geometric sequence. In part 8, we need to find the maximum height the ball above the floor the ball reaches after the third bounce. What I'm going to do is just draw this up. We've got now a situation where a ball is going to be dropped and it forms a geometric sequence. So it'll come down and this will bounce once. So what we have to begin with is 5 metres. It will then bounce up now to a height of 4 metres, come back down and then bounce up again. So what we'll end up having is something that looks like this. So this now is one bounce. So this is the height after the first bounce, which we're told is going to be four. And then this will be after the second bounce. And it will form now a geometric sequence. So it'll just keep going something like so. And it'll keep going. And we will form that sequence. So let's go ahead and look at this. Now we need to find the maximum height of the ball um, after the third bounce. So we can see that A is going to be 5. Now I'm taking this to be the first value and this to be the second value or after the first bounce. It's entirely up to you which you take as the first value. I'm going to take now 5 to be the first value. The ratio, if we consider now the second value, the second value is 4. The first value is 5. So the ratio is going to be 4 fifths or 0 0.8. So let's now look after the third bounce. So that's the third bounce. So this is going to be now the fourth term in my sequence. So what we're going to have then is now the fourth term, A4, is going to be equal to 5 times by 4 over 5 to the power of 3. So that's what it's going to be. That's now the 4. Then we're going to have this one. Then we're going to have this one right here. As stated, you could call 4 the first term. Entirely up to you. So what we'll have is 5 times by 0.8 to the power now of 3. And that's going to give me now 64 over 25 or 2.56. So that is going to be equal to 2.56 metres. So that is this height just here. So let's put that on. So that's that one. Okay, uh, again, if you wanted, you could have gone the other way and simply multiplied this now by 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and so on and so forth. But again, we might be asked for the 256 bounce, and quite clearly, we would want to use a formula instead of now tapping that through the calculator all those times. In part B, we're asked to find the minimum number of times the ball will bounce before the maximum height reached above the floor is less than 1.18 metres. So what we're going to have then is something that looks like so. So it'll come down, it'll come down. And what we want now, and let's just put a line on here. Uh, and again, this is not necessarily accurate, but it'll give us some idea. We want to know when it's going to be less than this fixed amount of 1.18 metres. Again, you can continually multiply by the, uh, the factor here. What I'm going to do instead is look at the more formal approach. We can say now using the nth term. The nth term is 5 times 4 fifths to the power of n minus 1. So 1.18, so this is going to be less than 1.18. So 1.18 is bigger than 5 times by 4 over 5 to the power of n minus 1. So you're probably sitting there saying, well, why aren't you just multiplying it by 0 0.8 until it goes below that? Certainly in terms of some questions on finance, 
it's a lot easier to use this approach. So let's just do 1.18. So 1.18, and we're going to divide that by 5. So that's going to give me now 0 0.236. So 0 0.236, all I've done is divided by 5, will be greater than 4 fifths or 0 0.8. We can write 0 0.8 entirely up to you, to the power of n minus 1. So I've just swapped it over. You really don't have to. At this stage, what we're going to do is take logs of both sides. doesn't matter which base. I'm just going to take base 10. If you want to, you can take base 0 0.8. That is entirely up to you. So what we'll have then is log of 0 0.236 will be greater than log of 0 0.8 to the power of n minus 1. Using the power law, we can say log of 0 0.236 will be greater than n minus 1, and then we'll have log of 0 0.8. I'm going to divide through by log of 0 0.8. Now, log of 0 0.8 is a negative number, so we'll have log of 0 0.236 divided by log of 0 0.8. As it's a negative number, the inequality needs to switch, and that will give us now that n minus 1 is going to be greater. Okay, adding the 1 to both sides, we'll just calculate this now. So in a calculator, we've got now the value here. Let's go ahead and do this. So we've got log of 0.236, and then we're going to have now log of 0.8, so log of 0.8. Then we're going to add 1, so plus 1, and that's going to give me, now let's just put that on, oh, we need to put a bracket there, there we go, plus 1. We can see now that 7.47, so 7.47, n must be greater than that, therefore n is going to be 8. So this is the 8th term, therefore now after... And just writing this down. Remember, I've chosen this, uh, these terms to be the height reach after the seventh bounce. So after the seventh bounce, that will be now the smallest number of bounces or the minimum number of bounces such that the maximum height reached is less than 1.18. So you're saying, well, why don't I just go ahead and just keep doing, uh, say if we did now 5 and we times it by uh, 0 0.8 and then keep times it times it by 0 0.8 and then just wait until it goes below times by 0 0.8 and then so on and so forth. Now these are discrete values such that we can see their bounces but if we're working in time periods it's a lot harder to do and especially if we've got some uh, messy numbers that solving this using logs, as we've got a power here, which is unknown, is far more effective. So you can probably think to yourself, well, I've gone about that the long way. This is the approach we would take to solve a problem. Some of the ones that we'll do later in the series will be significantly harder, and you will want to use logs. Again, if you want to use base 0 0.8, that is going to be perfectly fine. Um, entirely up to you. Again, you just have to appreciate that you're going to have the log of a negative number. If you need to do a bit of revision on logs, there's a full uh, chapter on this now included in this particular unit.